Charlotte's Web, Chapter 15, The Crickets. The crickets sang in the grasses. They sang the song of summer's ending, a sad, monotonous song. Summer is over and gone, they sang. Over and gone, over and gone. Summer is dying, dying. The crickets felt it was their duty to warn everybody that summertime cannot last forever. Even on the most beautiful days in the whole year, the days when summer is changing into fall, the crickets spread the rumor of sadness and change. Everybody heard the song of the crickets. Avery and Fern Arabelle heard it as they walked the dusty road. They knew that school would soon begin again. The young geese heard it and they knew they would never be a gosling again. Charlotte heard it and she knew she hadn't much time left. Mrs. Zuckerman at work in the kitchen heard the crickets and a sadness came over her too. Another summer gone, <sighs> she sighed. Lurvy, at working building a crate for Wilbur, heard the song and knew it was time to dig the potatoes. Summer is over and gone, repeated the crickets. How many nights till frost, sang the crickets. Goodbye, summer, goodbye, goodbye, sang the crickets. The sheep heard the crickets and they felt so uneasy, they broke a hole in the pasture fence and wandered up into the field across the road. The gander discovered the hole and let his family through and they walked to the orchard and ate the apples that were lying on the ground. A little maple tree in the swamp heard the cricket song and turned bright red with anxiety. Wilbur was now the center of attraction on the farm. Good food and regular hours were showing results. Wilbur was a pig any man could be proud of. One day, more than a hundred people came to stand at his yard and admire him. Charlotte had written the word radiant, and Wilbur really looked radiant as he stood there in the golden sunlight. Ever since the spider had befriended him, he had done his best to live up to his reputation. When Charlotte's web said, some pig, Wilbur had tried to look like some pig. When Charlotte's web said, terrific, Wilbur had tried to look terrific. And now that the web said radiant, he did everything possible to make himself glow. It is not easy to look radiant, but Wilbur threw himself into it with a will. He would turn his head slightly and blink his long eyelashes. Then he would breathe deeply. And when his audience grew bored, he would spring into the air and do a back flip with a half twist. At this, the crowd would yell and cheer. How's that for a pig? Mr. Zuckerman would call out, well pleased with himself. That pig is radiant. Some of Wilbur's friends in the barn worried for fear all this attention would go to his head and make Wilbur stuck up, but it never did. Wilbur was modest. Fame did not spoil him. He was still worried some about the future as he could hardly believe that a mere spider would be able to save his life. Sometimes at night, he would have a bad dream. He would dream that men were coming to get him with knives and guns, but that was only a dream. In the daytime, Wilbur usually felt happy and confident. No pig ever had truer friends. And he realized that friendship is one of the most satisfying things in the world. Even the song of the crickets did not make Wilbur too sad. He knew it was almost time for the county fair and he was looking forward to the trip. If he could distinguish himself at the fair and maybe win some prize money, he was sure Zuckerman would let him live. Charlotte had worries of her own, but she kept quiet about them. One morning, Wilbur asked her about the fair. You're going with me, aren't you, Charlotte? He said. Well, I don't know, replied the spider. The fair comes at a bad time for me. I shall find it inconvenient to leave home even for a few days. Why? Wilbur asked. Oh, I just don't feel like leaving my web. Too much going on around here. Please come with me, begged Wilbur. I need you, Charlotte. I can't stand going to the fair without you. You've just got to come. No, said Charlotte. I believe I better stay home and see if I can get some work done. What kind of work? asked Wilbur. Egg laying. It is time I made an egg sack and filled it with eggs. I didn't know you could lay eggs, said Wilbur in amazement. 
Oh, sure, said the spider. I'm versatile. What does versatile mean? Full of eggs? asked Wilbur. Certainly not, said Charlotte. Versatile means I can turn with ease from one thing to another. It means I don't have to limit my activities to spinning and trapping and stunts like that. Why don't you come with me to the fairgrounds and lay your eggs there, pleaded Wilbur. It would be wonderful fun. Charlotte gave her web a twitch and moodily watched its way. I'm afraid not, she said. You don't know the first thing about laying eggs, Wilbur. I can't arrange my family duties to suit the management of the county fair. When I get ready to lay eggs, I have to lay eggs, fair or no fair. However, I don't want you to worry about it. You might lose weight. We'll leave it this way. I'll come to the fair if I possibly can. Oh, good, said Wilbur. I knew you wouldn't forsake me just when I need you most. All that day, Wilbur stayed inside, taking life easy in the straw. Charlotte rested and ate a grasshopper. She knew that she couldn't help Wilbur much longer. In a few days, she would have to drop everything and build the beautiful little sack that would hold her eggs. Okay. Chapter 16 is called Off to the Fair. The night before the county fair, everybody went to bed early. Fern and Avery went to bed by eight. Avery lay dreaming that the Ferris wheel had stopped and that he was in the top car. Fern lay dreaming that she was getting sick in the swings. Lurvy was in bed by 8.30. He lay dreaming that he was throwing baseballs at a cloth cat and winning a genuine Navajo blanket. Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman were in bed by 9. Mrs. Zuckerman lay dreaming about a deep freeze unit. Mr. Zuckerman lay dreaming about Wilbur. He dreamt that Wilbur had grown until he was 116 feet long and 92 feet high and that he had won all the prizes at the fair and he was covered with blue ribbons and even had a blue ribbon tied to the end of his tail. I'll show you that picture again. <laughs> Down in the barn cellar, the animals too went to sleep early, all except Charlotte. Tomorrow would be fair day. Every creature planned to get up early to see Wilbur off to his great adventure. When morning came, everybody got up at daylight. The day was hot. Up the road at Arabelle's house, Fern lugged a pail of hot water to her room and took a sponge bath. Then she put on her prettiest dress because she knew she would see boys at the fair. Mrs. Arabelle scrubbed the back of Avery's neck and wet his hair and parted it and brushed it down hard until it stuck the top of his head, all but about six hairs that stood straight up. Avery put on clean underwear, clean blue jeans, and a clean shirt. Mr. Arabelle dressed, ate breakfast, and then went out to polish his truck. He had offered to drive everybody to the fair, including Wilbur. Bright and early, Lurby put clean straw in Wilbur's crate and lifted it into the pig pen. The great crate was green, and in gold letters it said, Zuckerman's Famous Pig. Charlotte had her web looking fine for the occasion. Wilbur ate his breakfast slowly. He tried to look radiant without getting food in his ears. In the kitchen, Mrs. Zuckerman suddenly made an announcement. Homer, she said to her husband, I'm going to give that pig a buttermilk bath. A what? said Mr. Zuckerman. A buttermilk bath. My grandmother used to give, used to bathe her pig with buttermilk when it got dirty. I just remembered. Wilbur's not dirty said Mr. Zuckerman proudly. He's filthy behind the ears, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Every time Lurby slops him, the food runs down around the ears. Then it dries and forms a crust. He also has a smudge on one side where he lays in the manure. He lays in clean straw, corrected Mr. Zuckerman. Well, he's dirty and he's going to have a bath. Mr. Zuckerman sat down weakly and ate a donut. His wife went to the woodshed. When she returned, she wore rubber boots and an old raincoat, and she carried a bucket of buttermilk and a small wooden paddle. Edith, you're crazy, mumbled Mr. Zuckerman, but she paid no attention to him. Together, they walked to the pig pen. Mrs. Zuckerman wasted no time. She climbed in with Wilbur and went to work. 
Dipping her paddle in the buttermilk, she rubbed him all over. The geese gathered around to see the fun, and so did the sheep and the lambs. Even Templeton poked his head out cautiously to watch Wilbur get a buttermilk bath. Charlotte got so interested, she lowered herself on a drag line so she could see better. Wilbur stood still and closed his eyes. He could feel the buttermilk trickling down his sides. He opened his mouth and some buttermilk ran in. It was delicious. He felt radiant and happy. When Mrs. Zuckerman got through and rubbed him dry, he was the prettiest, cleanest pig you ever saw. And there's Mr. Zuckerman, Mrs. Zuckerman, Wilbur. If you look closely, Charlotte is dangling down watching behind Mrs. Zuckerman. He was pure white, pink around the ears, snout and pink around the ears and snout and smooth as silk. The Zuckermans went up to change into their best clothes. Lurvy went to shave and put on his plaid shirt and his purple necktie. The animals were left to themselves in the barn. The seven goslings paraded round and round their mother. Please, 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 please take us to the fair, begged a gosling. Then all seven began to tease. Please, 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 please. They made quite a racket. Children, snapped the goose, were staying quietly, idly, idly at home. Only Wilbur, Ilbur, Ilbur is going to the fair. Just then Charlotte interrupted. I shall go too, she said softly. I have decided to go with Wilbur. He may need me. We can't tell what may happen at the fairgrounds. Somebody's got to go along who knows how to write. And I think Templeton better come too. I might need somebody to run errands and do general work. I'm staying right here, grumbled the rat. I haven't the slightest interest in fairs. That's because you've never been to one, remarked the old sheep. A fair is a rat's paradise. Everybody spills food at a fair. A rat can creep out late at night and have a feast. In the horse barn, you will find oats that the trotters and pacers have spilled. In the trampled grass of the infield, you will find old discarded lunch boxes containing the foul remains of peanut butter sandwiches, hard boiled eggs, cracker crumbs, bits of donuts, and particles of cheese. In the hard packed dirt of the midway, after the glaring lights are out and the people have gone home to bed, you will find a veritable treasure of popcorn fragments frozen custard dribblings, candy apples abandoned by tired children, sugar fluff crystals, salted almonds, popsicles, partially gnawed ice cream cones, and the wooden sticks of lollipops. Everywhere is loot for a rat, in tents, in booths, in haylofts. Why, a fair has enough disgusting leftovers to satisfy a whole army of rats. Templeton's eyes were blazing. Is this true? He asked. Is this appetizing yarn of yours true? I like high living and what you say tempts me. It is true, said the old sheep. Go to the fair, Templeton. You will find that the conditions at the fair will surpass your wildest dreams. Buckets with sour mash sticking to them, tin cans containing particles of tuna fish, greasy paper bags stuffed with rotten. That's enough, cried Templeton. Don't tell me any more. I'm going. Good, said Charlotte, winking at the old sheep. Now, there's no time to be lost. Wilbur, Wilbur will soon be put into the crate. Templeton and I must get in the crate now and hide ourselves. The rat didn't waste a minute. He scampered over to the crate, crawled between the slats, and pulled straw up over him so he was hidden from sight. All right, said Charlotte. I'm next. She sailed into the air, let out a drag line, and dropped gently to the ground. Then she climbed the side of the crate and hid herself inside a knot hole in the top board. The old sheep nodded. What a cargo, she said. That sign ought to say, Zuckerman's famous pig and two stowaways. Look out, the people are coming, umming, umming, shouted the gander. Cheese it, cheese it, cheese it. The big truck with Mr. Arabelle at the wheel backed slowly down into the barnyard. Lurvy and Mr. Zuckerman walked alongside. Fern and Avery were standing in the body of the truck, hanging on to the sideboards. Listen to me, whispered the old sheep to Wilbur. When they open the crate and try to put you in, struggle. Don't go without a tussle. Pigs always resist if they are being loaded. If I struggle, I'll get dirty, said Wilbur. 
Never mind that. Do as I say. Struggle. If you were to walk into that crate without resisting, Zuckerman might think you were bewitched. He'd be scared to go to the fair. Templeton poked his head up through the straw. Struggle if you must, but kindly remember that I am hiding down here in this crate and I don't want to be stepped on or kicked in the face or pummeled or crushed in any way or squashed or buffeted about or bruised or lacerated or scarred or biffed. Just watch what you're doing, Mr. Radiant, when you get shoving in you. Be quiet, Templeton, said the sheep. Pull in your head. They're coming. Look radiant, Wilbur. Lay low, Charlotte. Talk it up, geese. The truck backed slowly to the pig pen and stopped. Mr. Arabelle cut the motor, got out, walked around to the rear, and lo lowered the tailgate. The geese cheered. Mrs. Arabelle got out of the truck. Fern and Avery jumped to the ground. Mrs. Zuckerman came walking down from the house. Everybody lined up at the fence and stood for a moment admiring Wilbur and the beautiful green crate. Nobody realized that the crate already contained a rat and a spider. That's some pig, said Mrs. Arabelle. He's terrific, said Lurvy. He's very radiant, said Fern, remembering the day he was born. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, he's clean anyway. That buttermilk bath certainly helped. Mr. Arabelle studied Wilbur carefully. Yes, he's a wonderful pig. It's hard to believe he was the runt of the litter. You'll get some extra good ham and bacon, Homer, when it comes time to kill that pig. Wilbur's ears heard those words and his heart almost stopped. I think I'm going to faint, he whispered to the old sheep who was watching. Kneel down, whispered the old sheep. Let the blood rush to your head. Wilbur sank to his knees, all radiance gone, his eyes closed. Look, screamed Fern, he's fading away. Hey, watch me, yelled Avery, crawling on all fours into the crate. I'm a pig, I'm a pig. Avery's foot touched Templeton under the straw. What a mess, thought the rat. What fantastic creatures boys are. Why did I let myself in for this? The geese saw Avery in the crate and cheered. Avery, you get out of that crate this instant, commanded his mother. What do you think you are? I'm a pig, said Avery, tossing handfuls of straw in the air. Oink, oink, oink. The truck is rolling away, Papa, said Fern. The truck, with no one at the wheel, had started to roll downhill. Mr. Arabelle dashed to the driver's seat and pulled on the emergency brake. The truck stopped. The geese cheered. Charlotte crouched and made herself as small as possible in the knot hole so Avery couldn't see her. Come out at once, cried Mrs. Arabelle. Avery crawled out of the crate on his hands and knees, making faces at Wilbur. Wilbur fainted away. The pig has passed out, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Throw water on him. Throw buttermilk, suggested Avery. The geese cheered. Lurby ran for a pail of water. Fern climbed into the pen and knelt beside Wilbur's side. It's sunstroke, said Zuckerman. The heat's too much for him. Maybe he's dead, said Avery. Come out of that pig pen immediately, cried Mrs. Arabelle. Avery obeyed his mother and climbed into the back of the truck so he could see better. Lurvy returned with cold water and dashed it on Wilbur. Throw some on me, said Avery. I'm hot too. Keep quiet, hollered Fern. Keep quiet. Her eyes were brimming with tears. Wilbur, feeling the cold water, came too. He rose slowly to his feet while the geese cheered. He's up, said Mr. Arabelle. I guess there's nothing wrong with him. There's a picture of him getting doused with the water. I'm hungry, said Avery. I want a candied apple. Wilbur's all right now, said Fern. We can start. I want to ride on the Ferris wheel. Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Arabelle and Lurby grabbed the pig and pushed him head first into the crate. Wilbur began to struggle. The harder the men pushed, the harder he held back. Avery jumped down and joined the men. Wilbur kicked and thrashed and grunted. Nothing's wrong with this pig, said Mr. Zuckerman cheerfully, pressing his knee against Wilbur's behind. All together now, boys, shove. With a final heave, they jammed him into the crate. The geese cheered. Larvy nailed some boards across the end so Wilbur couldn't back out. Then, using all their strength, the men picked up the crate and heaved it aboard the truck. They did not know that under the straw was a rat and that inside a knot hole was a big gray spider. They only saw a pig. 
Everybody's in, called Mr. Arabelle, and he started the motor. The ladies climbed in beside him. Mr. Zuckerman and Lurvy and Fern and Avery rode in the back, hanging on the sideboards. The truck began to move ahead. The geese cheered. The children answered their cheer. And everybody was on their way to the fair. Okay, so we'll stop there for now. But I'll be back soon with more.